Cool. So, uh, who are you? So, my name is Otto Berkus. I'm uh, the, currently the general manager of, of the Ultramobile PC group uh, within the uh, mobile platforms division. And that's a, a recent change. Until uh, recently, I was the architect uh, for Ultramobile PCs. Excellent. So, transition to being a manager again, which is exciting in many ways. Yep. And your team is responsible for origami, or the thing that's codenamed origami that yes, got a lot of hype last week? That's, that's correct. Um, so what I have in my, uh, my hand is a prototype, or a pre-production pre unit, um, uh, more accurately. So this is one of an example of one of the, the products uh, in this class of um, Ultramobile PC that will be going to market in the next few months. That's all very right. exciting to finally see the, the fruition of, of all, the, all, all the concept work and prototyping work that, that we've done over the past uh, couple of years. Right. Now, you showed me, uh, I think, one of the wood prototypes back there on your desk. Um, about yeah, so a, this is uh, this <laughs> about a year ago. It's a, and I remember coming over here and you had a whole bunch of little mobile devices that you were all researching and stuff like that. Yeah, and the, the stuff on my desk has changed, but the mess hasn't. But yeah, there's been a lot going on. So, uh, you know, this was a, a kind of a form factor concept um, that, that we did to kind of prove out uh, the, the, the notion of having, you know, handheld usage in this kind of, uh, this kind of PC. Right. So why do one of these? Why why isn't a, a regular big tablet good enough? What what was the vision? What was your vision? Because you were the guy who pushed this, right? Uh, and, uh, yeah. What was your vision? How did you go into Bill Gates and say you, we need to do one of these things? Well, you know, and it's not just us, right? We have a lot of partners that you've that, been working with. That's you know? correct, and and you know, kind of getting getting everybody you know excited to be to be on the same page. So, you know, just thinking about where. Uh, uh, current devices, and by that I mean things like uh, mobile phones and, and PDAs uh, stop and where, you know, PCs pick up, you know, there's a, there's a big gap uh, in, in, in the middle where um, you could very much use the full power of the PC, but uh, you really can't afford to have, you know, the, the larger um, size of, of, of PCs that, that currently exist. Right. So you know, and I, uh, you know, I love you know, I love my laptop and 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 the tablets that I've used now for, you know, tons of functionality. But um, you know, for being uh, much more mobile and having something that's very easy to take everywhere, you know, we think this kind of form factor uh, is you know it is a very interesting and and, and powerful direction. Right. What, now, uh, now, is this a full OS on this thing? So uh, the vision. I mean, can is, I run Photoshop on this? You could, okay. You know, Photoshop may not be the the application um, that uh, you know that would make maybe the most most sense. That right, said, but Photoshop is a metaphor. Can I run any Windows application? Yes, you can. This? And and some applications, you know, make make more sense. You know, for the kind of scenarios that that we envision. You know, for uh, for these types of PCs being used. Right. Um, that said, you know, things like things like Photoshop, things like photo editing, we think there's a a huge opportunity to take uh, some of the applications that are currently targeting, you know, the traditional, you know, full-size full-size PCs and, and and larger laptops, and create uh, specialized versions that right. that really focus on on the unique uh, qualities and characteristics of of these ultra mobile PCs. So, for example, um, all of these uh, all of these new kinds of PCs will have uh, touchscreen interfaces. So. Uh, Thinking about how to how to use uh, you know the touch screen to really be able to navigate very quickly and very easily using the original pointing device, which is the finger. Right. Now, it, Microsoft has tried small devices and low cost devices before, right? I, I forget what they used to be called back four years ago. They didn't have a full Windows OS. On right. The the handheld PCs. Yeah. And and. You know, it was th that experience was very interesting because people really did like the form factor, but you know what they really wanted uh, was the full functionality of, of of the Windows PC. They wanted the compatibility. They wanted the uh, the same development uh, environment. Well, that's what got me excited about the tablet PC in the first place was that I could actually run full blown Windows apps on it, not some watered down or some lightweight app that was built for 
uh, like the wind pad. If That's you remember right. the wind pad from the 1990s. Yes, <laughs> yes I do. <laughs> yes, I've been through uh, all of those. <laughs> So what, what's good about this? Who is going to love this device? Is this a, for students? Is this for... I mean, tell me about who you think will really love this device and who will hate it, because that will tell us a little bit about where the edges are on, the, on this device. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure anyone's going to hate it. Uh, oh, there will always be someone who hates it. It's a Microsoft product. <laughs> well, it's not a Microsoft product. We helped, you know, we yeah. helped uh, our, our partners bring, bring this, this type of PC to market. Right. But ultimately, you know, we're all in this together. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing that, to, to be clear about is that, you know, this is a, this is a first generation. And you know the, the, these products um, will not be you know the the, the, the end um, of the vision. This yeah. is a starting point, really. Yeah, and you have a whole roadmap of stuff coming out, right? We do. And now, isn't uh, that dangerous for a a guy to say that there's a future product coming out? I mean, have we learned any lessons from Apple to be quiet about what's coming? Well, the you know the the. The kind of the launch campaign, the, the the bus campaign, is a whole different thing that, that I won't I won't address. <laughs> okay. it, it took on a life of its own. Right. Uh, uh, but when I talk about uh, kind of the, the, the future vision, um, you know, we you know we would like to enable this kind of form factor and and right. still being a, a full Windows PC. This is the um, Haiku uh, concept model that um, uh, Bill held up um, at. Um, his last win hack. Yeah. So this generated, you know, a lot of uh, interest and, and and enthusiasm. You know, thinking about new directions that that the PC could go. Yeah. And you know, the fact is that there's a lot of work to do both in hardware and software before we can get here. But the fact of the matter is that we can get there. Yeah. Well, you you showed me a wood prototype before, and you delivered on the first part of this vision, right? So. What? So yeah. what what does this do? Tell me a little bit about the specs. Tell me how much power is on here. So, you know this this uh, this has you know scaled back some of the processing power uh, to be able to fit into you know a very small form factor. Right. You know just basic physics and not involved there. And not your hand. <laughs> you you know, put a penny and four in there. It's going to burn your hand, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. I mean, there's just laws of laws of physics and thermodynamics that that you, you just have to deal with. Um, so the the kind of processing power is in the in the I would say the one gigahertz class okay. uh, full uh, full x86 you know compatible uh, CPU and architecture um, integrated uh, graphics uh, capabilities so uh, you know DirectX 7 DirectX 8 level uh, graphics okay. which you know isn't the isn't the leading edge but it's still extremely powerful. So you're uh, not going to run Halo 2 on this. You're not going to run Halo 2 yeah. on this. You know, in this generation, All right. <laughs> you know, there's always you know, there's always the next next version and the version. We're gonna call the next one the hamburger, right? <laughs> You're gonna fit a, fit a, so much stuff into that little box. Well, well you know, I mean, the great thing is that there's there's now you know industry focus on how to how to get more uh, graphics capability you know into into this this form factor yeah. and and still stay within within the thermal requirements. Right. So, so a gigahertz processor that lets me run a lot of stuff. It lets I, you run I still a lot run of stuff. on a gigahertz processor at That's home right. with Windows XP. This is XP Tablet Edition, right? This is XP Tablet Edition. So you know I can bring up the uh, I can bring up the tip and uh, there we go. So you know, full uh, full inking. Does it come with a, a keyboard or a stylus or anything like that? So um, I expect um, all of them to come with a stylus. Okay. Um, so integrated stylus. And we've seen how the handwriting recognition works. So it's good stuff. Yeah, good stuff. Now, can you put a USB keyboard on here? Absolutely. So, for example, um, there's a USB port on the left side, and an additional USB port on the right side. Um, some models will also have uh, integrated uh, docking connectors, so okay. you could uh, put the unit in a dock, uh, which would have uh, connectors to you know full size keyboard and and potentially even a, a full size monitor. Right. So there's oh, there's that, a, that, 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 uh, is there a VGA output on here? Uh, there there actually is. So there's a, a VGA output right on the side here. Okay. Oh, so you can hook up a full monitor. What resolution does the external monitor get driven at? So the same types of resolutions that that you would expect. So I can go uh, 1024 by 768. Absolutely. On external? Yes, you can. Excellent. Yeah. And can I go higher than that? Uh, you actually can. How high? 
um, it really depends on uh, what what uh, driver um, you know what the driver enables and oh, what, okay. what, what's and up to what, the manufacturer. What, how many manufacturers are there going to be of origamis? Well, that's hard to give you an exact number because the number seems to be increasing on a on a on a, on a regular basis. Okay. There's a ton of interest, and I I expect that to continue uh, as we go through uh, the the CBIT announcements. Right. What's price? What's the price going to be? How much is one of these going to set me back? Again, that's you know we're going to wait until uh, until the the products are announced. But okay. you know the price range that that we expect to see is in the say five ninety nine to nine ninety nine kind of price range. Okay, so fairly affordable. Uh, fairly affordable, and and one of the things I'm I'm excited about is that as we as we move forward and. Uh, you know, volumes get ramped up. Uh, you know, the, those the, the costs can can come down. Don't uh, you love Gordon Moore? <laughs> 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 For the people who don't rec recognize that reference, <laughs> there's a, a thing called Moore's law, right, which says the price of of uh, a certain number of transistors is going to fall every eighteen months. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> that's right. It's been pretty constant. For uh, it's amazing what this industry does in terms. It of is amazing performance. It I mean, is amazing. It, this kind of device used to cost me. I couldn't buy this five years ago, could I? You know, it and, didn't and exist like, five years ago. Yeah, well, it didn't That's exist. Right. But even something with this kind of power, you know, a, a gigahertz processor cost me three thousand dollars. You know, and and wasn't as cool as this. Believe me, <laughs> it is far amazing. noisier too. It, this thing's really quiet. No, it's 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 absolutely silent. And, yeah. Uh, you know, it's 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 very cool. Yeah, it's very uh, like literally cool. Yeah. Um, uh, very comfortable, to very comfortable to hold. Um, very lightweight, and as you notice, um, there are controls built um, into the sides for uh, handheld interaction. So, you know, we we think that the display is a great, you know, primary interface. And yeah. uh, let, me, let me show you. What's the resolution, by the way, on that? So the resol the native resolution uh, is uh, 800 by 480, and uh, the um, one thing that excuse me one second the one. <laughs> Phones, they always interrupt you. <laughs> well, we've got this great technology to do all this auto forwarding. You yeah. Know, because I'm, you know, not active on my on my desktop, but sometimes it's it's a little more help. Yeah, than, the office than, communicator than, team is doing good stuff. Okay. So I'm sorry. I, what was the resolution? <laughs> so I got distracted. So 800 by 480, and actually. Uh, 800 I'll, by 480. I'll show you okay. an example of, of an actual panel. Wow. That's that's an 800 by 480 panel, um, and it's a seven inch display. And it's similar uh, to the. It's, in fact, it's the same panel size as as what you find in uh, DVD players and some of the some of the automotive uh, uh, units that you can buy. Yeah, yeah. And you know, one yeah, of the reasons. Let me see the display on that. Yeah. So can you? Yeah, it's hard to show it yeah. here, but it's sharp. It's pretty nice. So you can use uh, you know all sorts of different kinds of apps on it. Do you expect any new kinds of software to ship with this? Uh, yes, and you know we have been working with uh, software developers, um, getting them uh, information and, and and getting them on board with uh, doing optimizations uh, to really take advantage of the capabilities and features of, of this kind of product. So yeah. this um, is basically a tablet PC, right? It is. A, a, it, in fact, it ships with uh, XP Tablet Edition. Okay. And that's you know it's very exciting to have you know the, the same APIs, the same uh, recognition technology that that ship in in, in the, the larger form factor tablets. Yeah. So any software that was written for the bigger tablet that I have should run on this just fine, except for the screen resolution. Yes. It might need a little bit of reconfiguration on. That's it. right, and that's that's the, one of the primary things we've been we've been focusing on and and educating uh, our, our uh, development partners about. Um, the other is is you know kind of the the natural uh, direct input that's possible uh, uh, with uh, the touch screen. Yeah. Oh, so you can touch on buttons and say yes. OK or close or that's, whatever. That's right. Um, what happens if I open a UI that that is made for a bigger screen? Let's say a, a UI that was designed for a 1280 by 1024 screen. So uh, can I scroll around and still see the UI? Depends on on how the application was written. Okay. Um, you know that we. These units will have technology to uh, kind of get around some of those those issues with um, auto scaling technology. Mm -hmm. So even though this is an 800 by 480 display, the uh, graphics processor is able to uh, represent higher resolution resolution images um, on on the same display. There's a little bit of loss of quality, but you can still see uh, you know what's going on uh, with the with the application.
Okay. And it's very easy to do that. So, for example, I'm, I'm switching right now to 800 by 600, even though it's an 800 by 480 display. And as you can see, you know, it's still uh, perfectly clear and, and legible. Oh, yeah. it's, you know, if you look really carefully, you'll notice a little bit of, uh, you know, a little artifact bit of artifacting. Things. But, okay. um, you know, it's a, great, it's a great way to kind of bridge the gap between applications that are optimized for the smaller display and ones that aren't. Right. What's battery life like on these? And does it come with replaceable batteries so I can charge up four or five batteries and take it? So, get, you know, because I go to Europe once yeah, a while. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a great question. And, and uh, you know, one of the, one of the things that, that we're working, uh, um, working on is to reduce uh, power consumption across the board and increase battery life. That said, you know, the, the battery life will depend on the specifics, you know, of the hardware, what, uh, what CPU is used, for example, what speed, right. and also uh, what the battery capacity is. You know, um, the batteries are, are uh, removable, um, so this one has, you know, just like you would find on a, uh, on a notebook, you know, yeah. uh, latches and pop the battery and, and put, a, put another one in. Um, we're also exploring uh, with our partners, you know, various uh, extended battery uh, solutions. So right. again, that's going to depend on uh, the specifics of, of of the unit and and the manufacturer. Right. Now, there's other small tablet PCs available, right? Motion has one that's just a little bit bigger than this already, but it's fifteen hundred dollars, right, on the right. street. Right. Right. And uh, OQO has one that's twenty one hundred dollars, right? which is much smaller than this. Yeah. If it's yeah. in a little tiny. That's right. Unit. That's oh, right. Almost a, a small MP3 player size case. So if you if you uh, think about the size in terms of volume, there's actually a really big difference between the volume of of a, of a product that sits behind uh, a seven inch display versus one that sits behind, say, an eight point nine or eight. When you say inch. volume, you mean size. The the physical yeah. physical yeah. volume, like yeah. how much how much stuff you know can you put you know behind the the, the piece of glass, um, and you know we. We think those uh, those form factors are great as well, um, and, you know, for for you know full functionality, ultra portable use. But um, we think ultra mobile is you know this size and smaller. Okay. So we actually expect to see uh, uh, over time you know, units that are uh, that are that are smaller than this that have you know the same kind of functionality. Right. You know, Okio is a great example of a. Uh, of a very focused um, uh, type of PC, you know, yeah. it's focused on on the enterprise market, and you know they really push the edge of uh, you know what's possible with with miniaturization. Yeah, and that's great. You know, along with that though comes some you know comes some compromises yeah. uh, in terms of usability, and also uh, price. And yeah. you know the we tried to find a sweet spot between uh, price and usability, so not pushing miniaturization. Too far, uh, which which drives cost up, and you know we also feel that um, you know this this type of size for the display is you know small enough to uh, be able to build something that's very mobile, but still large enough to really be able to uh, provide you know the full uh, full value of, of of Windows and Windows applications. Right. When when I was over in Europe, I noticed most of the people um, using computers were using you know one of these cell phone. Do you think people are going to upgrade from a cell phone style, you know, texting with a little bit of web interface to a, a bigger device like this that you you can't fit that in your pocket? Right? You can't fit this, and, and uh, to be clear, the, the target, you know, is, was not the pocket. Yeah. You know, so um, that said, you know, there's a whole range of, of scenarios and, and, and mobile uh, mobile uses. Yeah. So. Um, You're you know, a popular guy today. The, the press is <laughs> for the thing. The New York Times is probably trying to get a hold of you to find out what this origami thing is. Yeah, you know, for, for, <laughs> for for the type of uh, thing that fits in your pocket, yeah. you know, a, a phone is great. Um, but when you try to use a phone, you know, for for full, you know, data functionality, I mean, there's there's really a, you know, kind of a cliff that you that you ultimately you know fall off, and that's you know that that's where we believe that, you know, full function ultra mobile PC. You know, can can pick up where that kind of device leaves off. Yeah, tell me about your past. You, you were uh, one of the four guys who started the Xbox team, right? That's correct. So wow. I I joined Microsoft about 13 years ago. Uh, at this point, um, 
I was um, a developer. Now, why do you go from the Xbox team to the Walter Mobile? Uh, I mean, the Xbox team seems like the coolest thing in the world right now. It is. It's, it's, <laughs> it's great stuff, but you know, uh, I have, uh, you know, I have varied interests, and I, you know, it's, um, you know, it's exciting to identify, you know, other opportunities for uh, for our technology and, and try to bring the value of those opportunities to. Uh, to our developers and our customers. Yeah, actually, your background uh, drove a little bit of the hype behind Origami before anybody saw it because people were saying, "Oh, is it a portable Xbox? Is it a, is it an iPod killer? Is it a you know?" And it, tell me a little bit about why why you did this device. Why why not do a portable Xbox or do a a, a new kind of cell phone or something like that? Well, I, you know, again, I think I think devices are uh, you know are great for for certain things, but. You know, my you know my background is is very much uh, PC centric. You know, I bought um, when I was in college. I bought the first uh, IBM PC uh, for my science department. It was one of the first PCs on campus, and you know I've been uh, you know I grew up with a PC, and I've seen how remarkably flexible and powerful uh, it can be. You know, and how much. Uh, uh, how many new scenarios that we haven't even dreamed of? You know the the, the PC, the Windows PC can can enable, yeah. and you know to that point, I think uh, you know we've 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 spent a lot of time thinking about well, what kinds of new things will uh, you know can can this kind of this kind of PC uh, enable? Yeah, you know I I think we can identify you know some some very cool new uses. That said. You know, I think we're going to be surprised by what uh, what actually developers and what actually happens. What what yeah. what? Uh, My son's looking forward to, to trying it out because he has a big laptop. You know, and uh, that's hard to carry around when you're a it's, twelve year old. <laughs> it's, it's hard to carry around. Plus, it's hard to, for parents to afford that thing. <laughs> uh, I mean, I bought a low end computer for him, and um, it was still a thousand dollars. And this, if it gets down to your uh, six hundred dollar price point, is going to be pretty interesting. I, I think so, and and you know, with the the. The thing that you know, I think, is very exciting is that um, you know the PC is going to be freed um, a, a little bit from you know the kind of the, the, the desktop uh, uh, type of use, and you know to me what's what's super exciting is seeing you know what you know what kind of scenarios evolve. You know, for example, um, all of a sudden it makes sense to to think of this as a as a location or a GPS enabled. Uh, uh, type of product. We didn't even start talking about that. <laughs> um, there's Wi-Fi in here, right? There's Wi-Fi. Is there um, an there's, Ethernet there's, connector? There's Bluetooth. There is an Ethernet connector. So, okay. Um, right here. All right. So what are the connect? Just take me through the connectors, yeah, yeah. just so I and make sure I cover them all. <laughs> just to be clear, the the connectors and 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 uh, you know, uh, peripheral capabilities will vary, you know, uh, from machine from to machine, machine. Uh, okay. to machine. So this this particular uh, unit has. Um, Ethernet connector, uh, compact flash okay. slot, um, has uh, USB connector as we mentioned on this side with a VGA port and power, and on the other side, uh, it's got a, a hold button, which you know for something that has uh, a touch screen and buttons, but you might want to use as a media player, um, you don't want to have that functionality interrupted by an accidental tap. Yeah. Um, dedicated uh, volume buttons. Uh, headset jack and uh, another VGA port and uh, an auxiliary power. Is there a microphone in on these, or is um, there a microphone it, it, built in? Thank you for reminding me. Uh, it's th this is actually very exciting. This has a has a has a mic array, so it has dual uh, dual microphones. So it has two microphones to key in on where your voice is actually. Connected. And also uh, perform uh, noise reduction. Yeah. So for example. Um, you know, this would make a fantastic uh, podcasting uh, device. A, a, well, podcasting and and VoIP uh, tool, voice okay. over IP uh, communications tool. Very cool. Um, <laughs> is there GPS built into this? There is not GPS built into this, but, but one of one of the things. In. Yeah, actually, you can plug a GPS in. Um, perhaps even more appropriate for some of the scenarios is to uh, uh, use a, a Bluetooth enabled GPS uh, receiver. Okay. So then you have a, a cordless uh, cordless connection, and you know you can put the GPS receiver where you get the best uh, you know line of sight with the satellites, and then you can just have this. So it has Bluetooth. It'll hook up to my phone then and use the internet through my phone. Yeah, and and, and again, that's a thanks for bringing that up because talking about you know kind of where the where the phone leaves off and and where this picks up, 
you know, uh, phones are, are you know, uh, you know, very powerful in the sense that they're they're always connected to the network. And now that those networks are data enabled, yeah. you can actually take advantage of the data communications of you know of capabilities of the phone with being able to actually access and and view and interact with that data on on the PC. Interesting. Are you guys working with uh, the media center team? Because this seems like a really cool remote to have on my coffee table. Actually, it's a it's a great question, and uh, short answer is they're. They're very excited about this, just as just as we are, and you know, we're both looking at uh, bringing new uh, media uh, scenarios uh, online with, with this kind of PC. So do you go over and visit your old team at the at the Xbox team and uh, talk about how they might use this thing? <laughs> no, I I, I, I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get you to leak something here. <laughs> You know, I do. I, yeah, I do stay in touch with okay. what, what's going on over there. But if, to be honest, I I just haven't had the time uh, right. getting this this first wave out. Uh, to I'm asking you all the tough questions that a journalist no, no, would be asking. No, no, it's, it's, it, I I don't mind. Okay, I don't mind at all. <laughs> I do think that, um, you know, again, just as there there are there's a vibrant uh, game uh, ecosystem around the PC while we while we have you know dedicated. Um, you know, console uh, uh, effort. You know, I think this will be on the on the on the PC side of of the equation. Um, so I think there is. And there's a lot of games that you can play on a. You said DirectX seven or eight generation. That's right. That's right. Um, and certainly a lot of casual games. I mean, Absolutely. you go out to like Pogo.com and you can play chess all night long. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and actually, this is really nice because it's really comfortable to play with on your on your couch and stuff. That's like right. That. That's right. I mean, it's it's a very uh, it's a much more uh, kind of casual uh, uh, computing experience than kind of the more traditional, you know, sitting at the keyboard and getting work done. Yeah. This is this type of PC is much more uh, much more about uh, content consumption and really. You know, enjoying and interacting with 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 the data, you know, casual web browsing. It's it's super fun actually to to, to do those kinds of things with, you know, a, a type of PC that's really geared for being you know very mobile, very interactive, you know, natural interaction with the display. Are there going to be any accessories for this thing? I can imagine I would want a, a hinge on my car. If I'm going to put GPS on this, I want a hinge on my car absolutely. on my dashboard. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so again. The accessories will uh, will depend on the OEMs, but we do expect to see, uh, you know, solutions for the car, you know, doc docking solutions for, uh, for for desktop and and, and media type applications, um, you know, extended battery solutions, keyboard solutions, you know, various uh, carrying case and portfolios. So I think uh, you know it's it's very exciting uh, because you know there's there's going to be a, a rich ecosystem and vibrant ecosystem. You know, around these these base units. Right. You know, in my mind, uh, it's it, this this concept isn't isn't just about you know the base product and carrying around that product, but also all the all the additional software uh, that you can add to it, and all the additional peripherals that you can add to it to really you know customize uh, for the for scenarios and the usages that that you as a, a user will want. Right. Um, the tough question: Can I run Windows Vista on that? So, that's a great question. Um, yeah. Short answer is that we expect Vista uh, to, to be supported okay. um, on these. But not the glass, right? And not the glass interface? Because this probably doesn't have a 128 right. meg video card on right. it. Right, so it, again, that, that kind of leading edge uh, you know, uh, graphics feature uh, that requires you know, a, fair about, you know, a fair amount of horsepower you know, will not be supported. It's my expectation. Yeah. Um, it looks f just fine. To, you know, and, so and I'm using a non-glass computer too. <laughs> and, <laughs> and and all the all the other benefits of yeah. uh, of Windows Vista, you know, will be will be available on this hardware. So we have uh, and are running um, you know early versions of the Vista build on uh, some of these um, some of these units and some of some of the prototypes okay. that we have. So it will be upgradable to Windows Vista. It's not hard. There's actually a hard drive in here, right? There's actually a hard drive. This in is here. not Absolutely. running off of flash memory nope. or anything like that. Nope. Right? This is. Uh, you how, know, much, how big is the hard drive in here? So it's, it's going to depend on whether it's a 1.8 inch drive or a 2.5 inch drive, but anywhere from you know 30 gigs to 120 gigs. Ooh. <laughs> and uh, how update, updatable is the RAM on this? Is is there a 
upgrade for RAM? Can I put two gigs of RAM in here, or is it stuck with uh, a certain a limited amount of RAM? So just like with a um, you know with a with a PC that you buy today, um, you know, a notebook, let's say, or a, or a tablet, you know, you're going to specify the configuration um, that 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 you want. Yeah. Um, you know the the uh, degree of user upgradability is is going to depend um, from the from the various manufacturers. Yes, that's right. So check but, check you know, into we, the devices and make sure you get what you want. But we do have a, a Vista Ready you know program, so uh, people can pick the configuration that that um, you know is is going to uh, allow them to upgrade easily to to Vista. All right. I saw in the front of this in one of these devices that it sur supports surround sound. Is there something special in the device that does something cool? Or? Yeah, so this unit, and actually I didn't point out the speakers, this actually has uh, stereo speakers. Okay. So, oh, that's cool. Uh, it does support, um, this particular unit does support um, SRS, um, enhanced sound technology. Okay. So. If you're using a voice over IP like Skype or like MSN Messenger, does it cancel out the noise from the speakers so that you don't get echo? Oh, well, we'll, we'll have to see what the input. I haven't tried that, so okay. I, I can't. Because that would be cool walking yeah. around the house yeah. without a headset, you know, and just talking to somebody. On, I, I was just talking to people on Skype this weekend, so. Yeah, and actually, um, so Bluetooth, again, is, 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 is a great for, for that kind of thing. Yeah, because, you can get a little headset and stuff yeah. like that. I'm I'm personally much more comfortable, you know, talking to, uh, you know, to, to, to a headset than you know to a, to a physical object. Yeah. But, um, one other thing I should point out is, you know, the stand on the ah. back. So, you know, again for uh, uh, for enjoying media, just sitting sitting back and and, and watching a movie. You know. Oh, that's good for a coffee tray on an airplane. That's right. Exactly. Um, that's a good point. How uh, how do I get a DVD into this thing? So that I can watch a movie on an airplane. So similarly to uh, uh, you know to hard drive enabled um, media players, we think things like Movie Link and Cinema Now, are, uh, you know, uh, loading content through uh, through the internet is is going to be um, you know the primary way to to, to get um, uh, movie content. Right. Obviously, you know, you can, you can transfer as well from, uh, for example, the um, media center. You know, so. PVR can be easily transferred as well um, to these PCs, and the great thing is that you know since this is a PC, there's no transcoding. There's, yeah. it's just you know that identical files, you know same 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 playback technology. So you just have this this one to one mapping that makes things super easy. Really cool. That's a lot better than a standard DVD player that I see people playing with on the airplanes. Well, you know, DVD player is great if all you want to do is watch DVDs that you have. Yeah. But, you know, if you want to uh, load up, uh, you know, three new movies that, that you've never seen before, you know, you know, go to the web, load them up, and go. Yeah. Now, I see on your, on your board here a bunch of different, I, I guess, prototypes or designs. Can you tell me a little bit about the process of building this thing? What, you know... I know you've been working on it for a year because I saw it a year ago almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about the work, oh, that's a, that, the, the that, work it takes to get one of these out on a, the marketplace. That's a very long conversation, <laughs> and we should probably uh, uh, dig into that um, uh, deeper at some point. Yeah, so, I know you have to go in five minutes. So, so this is <laughs> so this is a, um, a another prototype. It's uh, uh, we expect units uh, based on this prototype to be. Um, uh, on the market as well. So just to give you an idea that you know there are going to be multiple uh, uh, multiple um, products on the market. Right. But the process, you know, it's it's. I would say that it's, you know, it's not necessarily a straight line path. But uh, you know, I think I think having a a, a pretty solid starting point, um, you know, it really helped uh, shorten the the amount of time that it that it took to go from you know concept to uh, product on the market. Yeah. You know, so starting with um, some some uh, fairly um, you know tight constraints, um, you know nailing down uh, things like things like the display, yeah, uh, and and trying to factor out um, uh, as many things that that could cause a delay. So, for example, using a uh, display panel that already existed rather than trying to get you know a completely new you know new one manufactured right and uh, you know harnessing uh, you know existing uh, CPU uh, architectures and, and and available hardware and you know thinking about uh, you know taking advantage of 
uh, you know, touchscreen technology that has been, you know, has been around for quite a while, but really hasn't, you know, uh, seen um, uh, seen that much use, you know, in the in the PC space and kind of synthesizing, you know, all these things that that, you know, kind of exist in in, in various bits and pieces. So a lot of your job was doing research work with the uh, various electronics manufacturers. I bet you were over in Taiwan and Korea and Japan quite a bit. Right? A lot of a lot of traveling. Yes, yeah. a lot of traveling, and trying to line up all the. All the all the different you know different pieces that that needed to come together to to get these products uh, yeah. built. What what did you wish you could have done on this device that you weren't able to? You know, to, I'm quite pleased, quite pleased. There's there's not one you know one thing that comes to mind that that, that I think you know if only if only we could have. I mean, I, I think given you know given the amount of time. And uh, you know some of the some of the limitations that exist with with hardware technology today. I'm super happy with with how this uh, uh, this first generation turned out. Oh, that sounds like a good place to end. And uh, thanks for uh, giving us a tour of Oregon. Oh, my pleasure. And uh, looking forward to seeing what else you got cooked up <laughs> in this. Uh, is there anything around here? <laughs> Last time I was here, there was a lot of hints at what was coming. <laughs> I know so you, you hit all the good stuff. <laughs> well, I did. I did clean up my office at one point. It's kind of filling back up again. But you'll have to come back in a couple of months and see what's done. Well, congrats! Going. You're about to get on a plane to go to CBIT, right? That's right. Which is where you're going to announce this and start That's right. showing it off. That's right. CBIT's a show with what 400, 500,000 people. I was oh, there eight it. years ago, and it was nuts. It was. It made CES or Foundex look like, a, you know, a, a country village. <laughs> so. Which, which is, you know, the. Which is interesting because there isn't a whole lot of you know we 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 don't think of CBIT as you know it, as a, as a big show and it's a much bigger show than, than CES. So. Yeah, it's it's uh, dauntingly big. <laughs> I mean, what one booth uh, one booth I think the German telecom booth was bigger than the convention center in San Jose in the middle of Silicon Valley, <laughs> 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 which gives you a, a sense of the scale of this thing. It's just, we, we can't even get a, where are you staying? Are you staying oh, like an not, hour and a half? It's, it's, we, we, we have to book like six months in advance. Um, oh, yeah. We didn't know, you know, we didn't know, uh, you know, the plants have been evolving, you know, over, over the past few months. So. Rent a nice BMW and you get on the Autobahn. <laughs> that was the only good thing about being an hour and a half away from CES, <laughs> but... <laughs> well, thanks a lot, man, and congrats hey, on thank that. You. Uh, really, I want one of these things, so this yeah, is really we'll, uh, we'll work really on, exciting. We'll work on getting you one. So. Well, you know. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.